Hey, Randy Hunter here from BeginningSax.com and RandyHunterJazz.VHX.TV. Now, you were just listening to Rhythm Changes Etude Number 3. This is the third etude in a series of four etudes that I've put together that, um, that are really designed to help you learn how to write etudes to really become more effective in assimilating your vocabulary, hopefully, into your improvised solos. I know that some of the most important work I ever did um, as a developing jazz musician was to write jazz etudes, and that was um, a really wonderful thing for me. Now, um, if you'd like a copy of this etude, just stay tuned with me for a minute or two, and I'll tell you how to get a copy of it. I'd be happy to send you a copy of it, and um, also etudes one and two, and I'll put direct links to the videos for those in the video description below. Now, in this etude, we I've added to the concepts that I covered in parts one and two in the series by adding flat nines on the dominant chords and pentatonics on the A section along with bebop scale passing tones on the bridge in addition to the other things that we've covered. So just as a brief um, as a brief overview of what's going on, again what I've, uh, I've done in Etude 1 is I started out, I took the arpeggios, the 1-3-5 arpeggios on the A section of Rhythm Changes and the pentatonic scales on the bridge and I um, tried to, uh, to, to write a composition in Etude 1 that really had musical approach to it so rather than just um and and so the 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 arpeggio is one three five over the first couple of bars <laughs> Now, that's um, some basic practice, but it's not musical at all. So I, I was thinking, you know, I want to write something that would take those tones and put them into something a little bit more musical. So for the first couple of bars of etude number one, I'm still using the tones you just heard. So there you hear, hopefully that's a little more musical. And again, you can follow the whole etude and you'll see. Etude number two, I took those tones and I added the, um, the seven and the nine to the basic arpeggio. So I've got the root third, fifth, seven, and nine. No alterations, no flat nines, or anything like that. And on the bridge, I added um, the pentatonic scales. I added the sevens to the pentatonic scales. Now, uh, cu first couple of bars of the, of, the, um, of the A section, the chords, if I put the, nine, the sevens and the nines. And so I'm thinking, how can I arrange those notes, maybe not include all of those on everything I play, but select from those notes and write, again, another musical composition that's, uh, that resembles a solo, but with the limited vocabulary, staying strictly within those parameters. So the first couple of bars... <laughs> So there, you're hearing just that specific vocabulary. And again, etude number two, you can check out the video link below. Now, in etude number three, I added the flat nines to the arpeggio. So rather than the natural nines on the dominant chords. Now remember, this is very important, the flat nines on the dominant chords I've added. And uh, also pentatonic scale tones on the A section. And again, on the bridge, I added um, some bebop scale passing tones. And just to give you another brief example, and you just heard the A2, but um, so on, on, these, uh, on the A section with the, um, the pentatonic scales I added. <laughs> And we still got the arpeggios. I didn't, I, I'm excluding none of the vocabulary we've covered. I'm adding to it. So we have those pentatonic scales to choose from, the one, three, five, seven, nine arpeggios with no alterations. <laughs> Now, if when I put the flat nines on the dominant chords, there's a major chord, no flat nine, but here on the A7, I'm going to include the flat nine, and we can do this on unaltered dominant chords if we use the flat nine with motion. So the flat nine, we want to have it serve a function of moving the line forward. <laughs> So uh, one of the ways the lines would move forward on the on the A dominant chord, 
on the G dominant chord. Maybe I'll start on the third and play three flat nine, eight, seven. So when I put these things together, I end up with um, the first couple of bars of this etude. And of course, you can follow the entire etude. Now remember, I told you I'd tell you how to get a copy of the etude. So if you'll visit my website, one of my websites, beginningsax.com, just go to the contact page and you'll find my email address there. Drop me an email and tell me you'd like a copy of this um, particular etude, Rhythm Changes, etude number three, for um, your instrument, tenor sax, alto sax, even concert pitch instruments. I'll be happy to send it to you. And, uh, and I hope you'll do the same with Rhythm Changes, etudes one and two. Check those out. Now, um, I'm not trying to sell you anything, but I do hope you'll consider my jazz improvisation lesson series. I've got lots of lessons that really help you learn how the jazz vocabulary works and also phrasing. So if you'd like to, um, if you'd like to check out those lessons, you can find them at beginningsax.com on the jazz improv lessons page. And I've also got beginning sax lessons, but uh, also if you're interested in subscribing to my complete jazz improv lesson series, Randy Hunter Jazz VHX TV. Now you may want to put HTTPS colon backslash backslash in front of that. Okay, uh, if you have problems pulling up the page. So I hope to hear from you, and um, let's take a listen to Etude Number Three one more time. <laughs> 